Hey kids, welcome to our midweeks. We're so excited for so excited. you to join us. Leah's with me here, and uh, we are going to be doing a lot of fun things on Wednesday nights. And uh, so this whole series, we'll be doing some games, we'll be doing Bible message, and so we're outside today because we're gonna do our first game. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. We're gonna do a little bit of finger painting. Finger painting? I think yes. I can handle that. What are we finger painting? Well, I don't know. Oh. I'm, I'm, a, I'm guessing. Okay. You and Miss Kelly are finger painting, okay. so you have to decide what you're painting. Okay. You'll paint it, and then me and Mr. Aaron are going to guess. So okay. I'll guess Miss Kelly's, you guess Mr. Aaron's, and then... No, Mr. Aaron's going to guess mine. Oh, yeah. Mr. Aaron's okay. guessing yours. All right. Well, you know, I spend a lot of time in kindergarten working on my finger painting skills. You so should be I really think good at this I, then. Yeah, because I spent three years in kindergarten. So it's I am by far the best finger painter out there. So hopefully okay, well, you can keep up. I'm a really good finger painter guesser. So mm, okay. even if like it's not painted well, I can I can figure it out, man. Okay. Well, and then for our Bible series, pick up that defined book if you haven't already. We're going to be just doing the introduction this week. So if you don't have it, no big deal. Pick it up in the bookshop. Uh, and then we're just going to be going week by week. There's going to be a Bible message. And uh, we'll just be taking our time over these next 10 weeks. And the cool part is that you're going to be able to answer questions together as a family. So there'll be some things that you'll do yourself and then there'll be some questions that you can answer as your family because your mom, your dad, they're going to be going through Ephesians uh, with their midweeks as well. So uh, I think that's enough though. And uh, also weekend messages. And then we also have, always have to promote our kids event coming up. Right. Yeah. Our kids service on September 27th at 5 p.m. 5. We're gonna be in the backfield on the stage. We're gonna do worship and games and a message. It's gonna be so much fun. So fun. If they were here last time, they know we did a little bit of a water balloon game. Yep, water balloon, fun. So now we have an even more fun game this time, but you'll have to come to see what it is. Yep, sounds so, good to me. Don't wanna miss it. All right, well, let's do, let's do some finger painting and you'll see who's gonna win, boys or girls. Start, start guessing right now who you think's gonna win. Boys, girls, I don't know. All right, let's get going. Okay, Miss Leah, you ready to guess? I'm ready. Oh, it's a, it's a sun. Yep. Yes. It's a fish! Woo! All right, you ready, Aaron? Start you, guessing? You know it. Okay, here we go, first one. So good, this is gonna be so good. It's a... Uh, it's... It's it's garbage, it's trash. No, come on! Looks like you threw away a bunch of trash. No, it's so easy. And you put it through the sink blender. You know how sinks have blenders? You know, it's right next to the light switch. And you accidentally turn it on. No! And you try to put the lights on. Aaron! What? A uh, bush! It's a bush! It's grass! It's grass! It's not grass! Come on! <sighs> Come on, this is so easy. Uh. What? That's gotta be grass. Is it a plant? Is it a plant, Steve? It's not a plant, but it is alive! I'm. Uh, uh, pass! Pass. Pass. We're moving uh, on. Okay. What uh, was it? It's birds. That's not birds. That is so birds. Whatever. We don't get the point. Next. Oh, Next. fine. Fine. Okay. Okay. Is there a reason you chose yellow? Was that on purpose? Well, I'm limited on colors. Oh, okay. Okay. So. Hmm. Okay. 
Um, is it headphones? No! Is it a trouble clef? No! Is it... Oh. It's... That's... It's a giraffe! No! That does it's not a, look like a giraffe! It's a pregnant giraffe! No! Come on! It's got four legs. It does have legs. It's Come got, on. It belongs in the Sahara. Uh, Not the Sahara, so, but the Savannah. It's so easy. You have, to, you have to specify it a little bit better, Steve. Yeah, you're drawing a really, really tall animal that's yellow. It's a giraffe, Steve. It is not a giraffe for the last time. You are terrible at guessing at this You're game. You're terrible at drawing. No! This is clearly an elephant. That's not an elephant! It is an elephant. Look at Where's the trunk, Steve? Right here. The trunk is straight up. When have you ever seen an elephant whose trunk just went it, straight it's up? It's because it's shooting the water out of the trunk straight up in Behind the air. Behind the face. Behind the ears, behind the nose. Where it's are the obviously ears, Steve? an elephant. Why is it so tall? Birds, elephants. This is the worst. No. That's grass and that's a giraffe. I quit. This is the worst. You steady me slow and sweet. We sway, take the lead, and I will follow. Finally ready now to close my eyes and just believe that you won't lead me where you don't go. When my faith gets tired and my hope seems lost You spin me round and round It remind me of that song The one you wrote for me And we
Welcome to our new midweek series. And uh, in case you're new to all of this, my name is Pastor Steve, and uh, there'll be uh, Mr. Aaron who will be uh, joining us and doing some of the message as we go through these next 10 weeks. Uh, Miss Leah and, and Miss Kelly will be a part of, of this midweek series too with some of the activities that we're doing. Uh, so we're going to have a lot of fun. Now this first week is really more of an introduction. And the reason why we're doing an introduction is because since we are doing it differently, we wanted to make sure that you had time to collect your supplies. So it's like, what supplies are you going to need? Now if you're used to doing midweeks with us, in, in past years, we've done Awana, and Awana is amazing, uh, but one of the most amazing parts of Awana is being in person. And uh, so since we weren't going to be able to do it in person, or at least start in person, we wanted to do something a little different. And so we thought that we would take this opportunity to try something. And, and so we're going to be doing a midweek study, uh, and uh, we're going to be going through some different Bible stories, but we're also going to be looking at uh, a, a chunk of Ephesians. And now you're like, Ephesians? Yeah, Ephesians is a book of the Bible, and, and we'll get into more of that in a little bit. Uh, but uh, the other important part is your parents are going through Ephesians. And so since they're doing it from home or virtually, and you guys are going to be doing it from home, we just thought, what a cool way that you can have some family conversations because you're going to be learning some things about Ephesians and about the Bible, and your parents are going to be learning about things from Ephesians and the Bible. And we're going to do our, our best to have a couple questions that maybe you can sit down as a family to talk about. Because I know that's some of the best time that I've learned uh, and, and taught with my kids is when they have questions. And then we look to the Bible and we talk through it, and it really helps. So Back to the supplies. What supplies do you need? Well, you really only need two things. You need the Bible, and uh, which all of you guys hopefully have. And then the second thing that you're going to need is one of these workbooks. And these are this is called Defined, and we have two different workbooks. And it's because we're splitting up the grade level uh, between kinder and second, and third through sixth. And so on the book, it says, one says younger kids, and the other one says older kids. And now I know kinder through second grade, I know you guys think that you're older kids. But the, the, session, the, the red book that says younger kids, red, orangish book, that's going to be for you. And you're going to want to get this book because it's going to be easier for you to follow along, easier for you to go through, because some of the questions in, in the older book are directly related to the older kids. So as much as you want to be an older kid, you're going to have a lot more fun and learn a lot more if you get the younger book. So if you are in kinder, first, or second grade, you can get the defined book and get it the, the reddish, orangish book. You can get it in the Horizon Bookshop. Um, and if we, they don't have it, talk to us. You can also get it online, but we have it here in the Horizon Bookshop. Now, if you are third, fourth, fifth or sixth grade, you're going to want this blue book. And again, the blue book is in uh, the Horizon Bookshop. Pick it up. Uh, they're not expensive at all. And uh, within each one, there's going to be, you'll see, and then both of them are set up the same. There's going to be uh, they're, they're what we're talking about for the week, kind of our message. And then there'll be some activities. And the activities will go through uh, each week, we'll pick one of them to go through together, and then you'll do it on your own and go through the rest. And then there's going to be things that you do over the next five days. So each day, it's kind of like a daily devotion. It gives you some Bible study to go through, some, some verses of the Bible. It asks you some questions, and then you just can fill in the blanks. And so each day for five days, you'll go through, uh, and then you'll have a journaling sec section that you can go through. So there's a lot of stuff to do each and every week. I don't want you to look at it as homework, okay? Because homework is something that you have to do, okay? This is something that we want to do, that we get to do because there's nothing better that we can do than to learn more about our amazing God who has done so much for us. And that's going to tie us into Ephesians. So 
As we get this intro, you don't need anything but your Bible today. Uh, so if you haven't grabbed your Bible, you can pause this video and go and run and get your Bible. And then for next week, let's make sure that we get that workbook because you're gonna just get so much more out of it if you have that workbook. So are you guys ready to do a little Bible study? Great. Okay, so grab your Bibles and uh, we're going to be in Ephesians. So find Ephesians in your Bible. And uh, as I do so, I'll grab my Bible here. And I'm going to find Ephesians. I'm going the wrong way. All right, so Ephesians. And, and we're going to look at chapter 2. And we're going to start there. And then we're going to go back to chapter 1. Because in this book here, in the very beginning of the book, it goes through Ephesians 2, 1 through 2, 10. So chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. And each week, we're going to break down a different verse from this, this section. And one of the biggest things it says, and I'll read it to you, and then we'll, we'll talk about something else. And, uh, but it says, and you were, in verse 2, starting in verse 2, uh, sorry, verse 1 of Ephesians 2. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you previously lived according to the ways of the world, according to the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit now working in, in the disobedient. We too all previously lived among them in our fleshly desires, carrying out the inclinations of our flesh and thoughts, and we were by nature children under wrath as the others were also. Now, some of that is, is pretty tough to understand. And so I'm going to actually pull up my phone here because I'm going to read the NIRV version, which allows us to look at this is obviously you guys know our Bible versus a lot of our, our NIRV. But here it says in verse one, it says, you were living in your sins and your lawless ways, but in fact, you were dead. You used to live as sinners when you follow the ways of this world. And I think that's something that, okay, we're gonna talk about this, this, uh, this series, about being a sinner and what that means. You know, and then it says, at what time we lived among all of them, our desires were controlled by sin. We tried to satisfy what they wanted us to do. We followed all our desires and thoughts. God was angry with us like he was with everyone else. That's because of all uh, because all of all the kind of people we all were. But God loves us deeply. He is full of mercy. So he gave us new life because of what Christ has done. And that's just an amazing kind of start to this series. He gave us life even when we were dead in sin. God's grace has saved you. Now, if you've been with us on the weekends, we've talked about God's grace and how we're saved by grace, meaning it's it's something that we don't, deserve or something that we ha can't earn but it's a gift and he has done it to show the riches of his grace for all time to come his grace can't be compared with anything else he has shown it by being kind he was kind to us because of what christ jesus has done god's grace has saved you because of your faith in christ your salvation doesn't come from anything you do it's god's gift we did that verse uh, not that long ago it is not based on anything you have done. No one can brag about earning it. We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. And so we're going to unpack this whole Ephesians chapter 2 over the next uh, nine weeks, eight weeks. Uh, and we're also going to tie in some of the uh, Ephesians chapters. Now, the cool thing about Ephesians is Paul wrote the book of Ephesians. And uh, we're going to get into Saul and, and becoming Paul. Um, but Paul wrote Ephesians, and, and so he wrote this book ultimately to talk about like how we need to live our lives now that Jesus came. It's a whole new world. Like it's a whole new life for us. Like Jesus was a game changer. Jesus changed everything. By Jesus coming and dying for our sins, that changed the way that we need to look at our entire lives. And this was, and this book of Ephesians kind of does that. It kind of gives us some practical ways that we can look at our lives and, and how we should live and what we should do and, and, and all of this because of Jesus. And now I'm going to go back to Ephesians chapter 1 because I'm going to read, read this, this verse here in, in chapter 1. 
at verse, verse 4, because I think this is important. God chose us to belong to Christ before the world was created. Now just think about that for a second. God chose us to belong to Christ before the world was created. It's like, God chose me, God chose you, all before the world was created. Wow. He chose us to be holy and without blame in his eyes. Wait, told, he chose us to be without blame in his eyes, but he just said, Paul just says in the next chapter that we're all sinners. And it's like, ah, what does this mean? He loved us. So he decided, how could we be blameless? I'm going back to that. How could we be blameless if we're all so sinners? Well, we're going to learn about that. He adopted us as, he, as his children with all the rights children have. He did it because of what Christ Jesus has done. It pleased God to do it. I think it's just so amazing to think that God chose each and every one of us. Even before the world was created. Now, if, if, if any of you are football fans, you know, this, this weekend, you know, was the first weekend for uh, the NFL season. And, and there's, there's players on each team that are called rookies. And now if you don't know what a rookie me is, it means that it's their first year playing in the National Football League. And so before they're able to go on a team, the, the National Football League, the NFL, the Football League, has what's called a draft. And so what happens is all the, the college kids, all the kids who play college football are in this NFL draft. And so the team with the first pick in the draft, and so every team gets a pick, and they get a pick based on essentially how good or bad they were the previous season. But every NFL team gets a draft choice. And they get multiple. There's like seven rounds. But they get a draft choice. And so that first pick of the draft, this year it was the Cincinnati Bengals. They were the first pick in the draft. And so everyone is waiting around to see who they're going to pick. And then they end up picking this guy. His name is Joe Burrow. He's a quarterback. Not a big point. But when the Cincinnati Bengals picked Joe Burrow, they showed a picture of, of him, a video of Joe Burrow, like at his house. And he's like, yeah, I'm, I've been picked. Like, woohoo! yeah, way to go. And this continues to happen through the whole draft. Like some of the biggest celebrations are from like the people who are picked, like some of the last picks, a sixth and seventh round draft picks because they didn't know if they were going to be picked and they get picked and it's like, yes, I got picked. And they're high-fiving their family and they're throwing a big party and celebrating because they got chosen. And you're like, what does all of this have to do with the Bible? Well, that's us. We have been picked by God. We have been chosen. You have been chosen. I have been chosen. God has picked us all. But the amazing thing, it's not like he's looking down from heaven right now and be like, okay, I think I'm going to choose you and I will choose you and I will choose you. It says that he chose us before the world. And he looks at us as perfect, which is amazing because we just talked about how we're sinners. So it's like, we don't even look at ourselves as perfect. I know I don't look at myself as perfect. I'm not like, I'm the most perfect person ever. But God sees us as perfect and without blame in his eyes. And that's all because of what Jesus did. If it wasn't for Jesus, as it talks about in, in, in verse 1 of, of chapter 2, we were all sinners. We were all sinners in this world. But if it wasn't for Jesus, we would still be in that sin. And so this book of Ephesians is going to really, like we're going to dig into this book and we're going to dig into some of the other books in the New Testament and we'll go back to, to Genesis and we're going to be bouncing all over the Bible. But ultimately, we need to remember one thing. God 
chose you. God chose me. But he specifically called your name. He said, you know, I am choosing, just like the NFL draft, Steve Case. Woo! I mean, it's so amazing. Just think about for a second that the creator of everything wants you to be in heaven with him. The creator of the entire universe, of everything in this whole world, everything that has ever been made will ever be made, that he has picked you. That's amazing. And if that doesn't get us excited, well, I don't know what else can. But because he chose us, he has also chosen us to be on this earth for a purpose. And that's what we're going to spend these next nine weeks, ten weeks looking at. But if you ever have doubt about yourself, if you ever have any doubts about who you are as a person or as this book says, you know, defined who God says you are, just remember just think of it just like that NFL draft, the first pick in the draft, because you know what? We're all equally picked. It's not like we're waiting to the seventh round, like God picked all of us equally. That first pick, first round of the NFL draft, and it's like God is looking down on us and he's saying, I choose you. Now that's some powerful stuff. And we should be rejoicing over that. And every day, he's continuing to choose you. Now the choice is, do we choose him? Because if you choose him, he's going to continue to choose you. Because he's choosing you, choosing you, choosing you, choosing you every single day. And we just need to choose him. So is that what you're going to do? Are you going to spend this, these next 10 weeks looking at how we can choose him more and have a better relationship and, and work with him and, and learn about him and learn about the creator of the universe and learn about what he wants from our lives? Because that's what gets me excited, is how we can learn what he wants for us and how we can serve him that much more because ultimately he's up there choosing us every day. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this series. We thank you for just a introduction start. That Lord, that all we need to think about and know is that you choose us. You chose us. Not just randomly, but specifically. That you called each and every one of our names. And so, Lord, as we wake up tomorrow morning, help us wake up with that smile on our face, knowing that you are calling our name, saying, I want you on my team. And that's amazing. So we thank you for that. We thank you for choosing us. We thank you for sending your son to die for our sins. And Lord, we're excited to see what you have in store for us over these next uh, 10 weeks. We thank you for this time, and we just give it all to you, and all praise and glory to you, in Jesus' name. And all of God's children said, amen. All right, my friends, I'm gonna have one question for you to talk about with your family today. Just one. And I'll be right back with that. All right, kids, one question. And that one question that I have for you, and then I want you to talk about with your parents even. Here it is. Simple. How can you choose God today? How can you choose God? We know he's choosing you. So how can you show that you're choosing God? It's a simple question. And then when you say it, guess what? You got to do it. Because words are very easy just to say, but we got to actually start taking action. So whatever your answer is of how you're going to choose God, guess what? Now do it. 
Don't forget to pick up this book uh, this Wednesday, you know, before this next Wednesday. Don't miss out on our weekend uh, messages. And, and don't forget, Outdoor Kids Church is coming up on September 27th, 5 p.m. Be there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you guys soon.